Let's all stand for the bride. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Great. Go get your bride. <laughs> Would you all join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you on this beautiful day, God, with hearts that are just full of gratitude and joy to be able to be here to participate in, um, Lord, this beautiful relationship that you have created between Scott and Jessica. Father, we are so incredibly grateful to have them in our lives and to see, Lord, the way that you have brought them together and then bringing them to this point, God, where they are wanting to step into covenant with one another and begin a new family. And so, Lord, we are just incredibly grateful to be here to witness this. We pray, Father, for your blessing over the ceremony and for the celebration and for everything that happens today. So, Jesus, we want to give you glory and thanks in your name. Amen. You can be seated. Well, on behalf of Scott and Jessica, thank you, family. And for those of you who are joining us through the live stream, thank you for tuning in. They are incredibly thankful to have you all here with them to celebrate this special day. This day is the fruition of a lot of prayer, a little bit of worrying, uh, but mostly just anticipation and excitement. And they're incredibly grateful to be able to, to have you participate with them today. We're here today to witness uh, the coming together of Scott and Jessica and the holy union of marriage. And let me just start off by saying that marriage is a gift from God. It is the deepest form of intimacy that two human beings can experience this side of eternity. Scott and Jessica, your marriage is going to be the conduit for some of the deepest and greatest joys of your life, but it's not always going to be easy. In fact, it was the British author and evangelist Leonard Ravenhill who once said, if love is blind, marriage is an eye opener. And it's true because the Lord is going to use your marriage, uh, not as just something to bless you by, but also as a tool to mold you and shape you until, into the character of his son, Jesus. The idea of marriage was born in the heart and mind of God. In fact, in Genesis chapter two, we read of the very first wedding ceremony. It was the sixth day of creation and everything that God had created, he looked upon and he said, it is good, it is good, it is good. But there was one thing that was not good. It was not good that man should be alone. And so God made woman from the man and brought her to him. Scott, this person standing beside you is a gift from God. You have not earned this gift or deserved this gift. This is 100% God's grace to you. God looked at you and he decided it's not good for you to be alone. And so he brought you Jessica. And scripture tells us that when, when the man saw the woman, he said, now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Thus the word of God says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. And that is what we are all here to witness today. These two lives that have been separate and independent are leaving everything that has been safe and familiar, and they are stepping into a union with one another to begin a new family together for the rest of their lives. Marriage is a sacred covenant between a man and a woman for their entire lives. But marriage is rooted in something much bigger than that because it's really telling a story about a God who loves and sacrifices for his people. In fact, throughout the Old Testament, God refers to himself as a husband and the nation Israel as his bride. And then the New Testament, Jesus refers to himself as a husband and to the church as his bride. In fact, in Revelation 19, in the very last days, we see that there will be a wedding celebration between the church and our groom, Jesus Christ. And I say all that to say that marriage is rooted in a bigger story. 
It's rooted in the story of the gospel. The same intimacy, sacrifice, and sharing, and love that God wants to share with his people. So a husband is to give to his wife. And in the same way, Christ's church is called to respond to that kind of love with trust and honor and devotion. So a wife is to give to her husband. The gospel tells us that the greatest gift that God could ever give is the gift of himself. And that is exactly what he has done through his son, Jesus. He has given himself for us and to us because he loves us. So that if anyone comes to him by simple faith, they can know and experience the deep relationship that he wants to have with his people. And I'm here to tell everyone today who is listening, there is nothing in the world that is greater than that. In fact, the apostle Paul, towards the end of his life, after completing so many religious duties and keeping so many rules and being such a good leader, he looked back on his life before he knew Jesus and he said, I count it all as rubbish in comparison to knowing Jesus that knowing Jesus is the most valuable thing that Paul had found in all of his life. And maybe you're listening to this today and you don't really understand what the gospel is about. Essentially what happened in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is that God gave himself to us and for us in love. And since there's nothing greater than God himself, there is no greater gift that he could give than the gift of himself. To be forgiven, to be brought near, to be known, to be loved, to be accepted. And this truth is deeply meaningful to both Scott and Jessica because they have both experienced Christ's transforming power in their lives personally. But this message isn't only good news to them, it's good news for all of us because the whole world is looking for a savior looking for something to add weight and significance and meaning to their life. And the Bible says that when we look to anyone other than Jesus or to anything other than Jesus to meet that deep need, we end up with our heart broken because only Jesus can love us in the way that we truly desire to be loved. God has given himself for you and to you in Christ. And marriage is a reflection of this. It's what we do when we're in love we give ourselves wholeheartedly to another person. Scott, the greatest gift that you could ever give Jessica is the gift of yourself. Jessica, the greatest gift that you could ever give Scott is the gift of yourself. This is the high call of marriage. It's a call to take up responsibility for another person. It's a call to love sacrificially, and it's a call to forgive with no strings attached. And the truth is your love is going to be tested. And that is why this covenant that you are making today is so important because what you are entering into today is for life. Standing in front of your friends and your family and for everyone online. And most importantly, you're standing before the Lord Jesus Christ. It isn't a contract that you're entering into, it's a covenant. A contract is designed with a way out, but a contract, a covenant is about giving and it is forever. And it's this covenant that's founded on God's grace that will sustain your marriage. Diedrich Bonhoeffer once said, it is not your love that will sustain your marriage, but it is your marriage that will sustain your love. And that sounds counterintuitive, but it makes perfect sense when you understand that marriage is a part of a bigger story. Scott and Jessica, what you are doing here today is saying, Jesus, I come before you today and I commit myself to be a faithful husband and a faithful wife to the one that you have entrusted me with. And secondly, you are pronouncing vows today, saying that you fully understand these responsibilities and that you are committed by God's grace to fulfill them. But lastly, you're making a vow and a promise to your friends and your family and other people in your life that you will labor to show what a Christ-centered marriage will look like. And I have great confidence today on a personal note, marrying Scott and Jessica. I got to spend about six weeks uh, getting to know them really well and having really in-depth conversations and discussing really hard things about marriage. And um, we're never really ready for marriage, but the most we can hope for is that we go into marriage with our eyes wide open. 
And I can say with full confidence that Scott and Jessica are doing that today, and I couldn't be more excited for the both of you. Jessica, from this day forward, you come alongside Scott in a way that no other woman can or should. No one is going to be able to encourage him and lift him up the way you can as his wife. Scott, you have a reputation of a man who loves God and even in even greater ways, I've seen, I've seen just your love and your commitment to, to serve the Lord, but also I've seen the way that you love Jessica. And no one can love her the way that you can as her husband. And so at this time, I'm gonna lead you through some vows. And I'm gonna ask that you would answer these, uh, these questions with the phrase, I will. Will you, Scott, take Jessica to be your lawfully wedded wife, to live after God's holy ordinance in the covenant of marriage? Do you vow to love her only, forsaking all others, and to be there for her in sickness and in health, in times of prosperity and through times of difficulty for as long as you both shall live? I will. Will you, Jessica, take Scott to be your lawfully wedded husband? to live after God's holy ordinance and the covenant of marriage? Do you vow to love him only, forsaking all others, and to be there for him in sickness and in health, in times of prosperity and through times of difficulty for as long as you both shall live? I will. Scott, as Jessica's husband, God has called you to love her, to serve her, and to lay down your life for her the way that Christ has done for the church. God has also called you to be a spiritual leader in your home and a best friend to her. Will you commit yourself to this great privilege and responsibility as Jessica's husband? I will. Jessica, as Scott's wife, God has called you to love him, to support him, and to give yourself to him just as the church is to give itself to Jesus. God has also called you to comfort and encourage Scott and stand beside him in all that God calls him to do. Will you commit yourself to this great privilege and responsibility as Scott's wife? I will. At this time, we are going to exchange rings and I have them, <laughs> thankfully. The scripture says that when we become a Christian, the Holy Spirit indwells us and it's a, it's a seal. It's a guarantee that we belong to Jesus. It's, it's symbolic that we are, are his. And exchanging these rings is also symbolic. The, the rings symbolize our lives. And as we're exchanging rings, we're saying, my life no longer belongs to me, but I give myself to you. And so Scott, you can place the, the ring on the finger of Jessica's left hand and repeat after me. Wear this ring, Jessica. Wear this ring, Jessica. As a symbol of my love for you. As a symbol of my love for you. For with this ring, for with this ring, I am yours. I am yours. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jessica, you can place the ring on Scott's left ring finger and repeat after me. Wear this ring, Scott. Wear this ring, Scott. As a symbol of my love for you. As a symbol of my love for you. For with this ring, for with this ring, I am yours. I am yours. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, Scott and Jessica have requested that um, their very first act in their marriage ceremony together would be to partake of communion. Uh, which is deeply symbolic for us as Christians. And so if you're not familiar with what it is, it's, it's, it's wine and it's bread and it symbolizes the broken body of Jesus for us and his shed blood that forgives us of our sins. And so they're going to step to the side and serve one another communion and then they will come back and we will continue the ceremony. So let's just take a moment of silence for them while they do that.
I'll, I'll, I'll announce it. Uh, so Scott and Jessica would like to honor their parents by uh, giving them flowers now. Okay, one very important order of business. By the authority given to me by the Church of Jesus Christ and the state of California, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Scott, you may kiss your bride. Yay. I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Scott and Jessica Buto. Thanks for showing up, and I, I can't believe we got married. That's, Woo! yay! Yeah. Um, yeah, we just want to thank you for being in our lives, and all of you have made a really big impact on us, and we just are so thankful that you're a part of our community. Um, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that this year has just been really difficult, and weird like most of you have not met Scott oops and haven't met me and there's just been a lot of <laughs> a lot of loss and a lot of grieving um, and you know some people have gone through some really tough times and it's just been hard not to be with each other so thank you for showing up um, things are opening up again and I can't wait to see you guys um, but, but it did make this a lot easier to plan, so that's good. Um, do you want to say anything? You done? For now. Uh, okay. No, yeah, just to reiterate, thank you all for, uh, for showing up for this wondrous occasion of ours. Uh, sorry you couldn't be here in person, but yeah, shout out to all my, my friends and family on the other side of the country or uh, my serious engineers on the other side of the globe. So thank you guys <laughs> for showing up. Uh, shout out to you guys. Um, yeah, thank you so much, um, and thank you, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna speak very mediocre Chinese, so please don't judge me. Um, okay. Um, okay, lastly, now for the serious business. Um, We didn't ask for a registry, so below there are two links for our charity, and I really want your money, all right? There's some rich people on this call. So just feel what, you know, the spirit moves and then just add a little zero to the back. Um, for those who've already given, thank you so much for your generous gift. You're not only kind, you're incredibly good looking, you have amazing abs, and all your jokes are really funny. Um, so I just wanna talk a little bit about our two organizations. Um, CASA, uh, Scott is a CASA, a court-appointed special advocate. Um, do you wanna talk about what that is and what they do? You're doing a good job. Okay, yeah. so um, 
Los Angeles has one of the largest foster care populations in the country, and um, a lot of these kids are moving in and out of court systems, they're moving out of schools, they see therapists, they, you know, they're just going all over the place and they don't have one single person who's a, their point of contact advocating for them. And so CASAs are a volunteer who stick with them all throughout the program and they meet with their social workers, their teachers, their therapists, whatever, and they try to gather all that information to um, just really help the court make the best recommendation for these kids. So that's what CASA is. So, um, And then for me, uh, I volunteered at the Downtown Women's Center in Skid Row. Um, again, Los Angeles is one of the homes of the largest homeless population in the country. I think the last um, survey was around 60,000, and one of the fastest growing population of that are women, unhoused women. Um, some are escaping some pretty gnarly, you know, domestic violence things. Maybe they lost their job and now they're, now they're unhoused. So the DWC is a great place where they provide permanent supportive housing, job training, they make soap. So if you don't want to donate, buy some soap, it's really nice. Our friend Jess has done some collaborations with our friend Alyssa. Um, so you can buy some of that swag. But yeah, just thank you so much. And you know, we just want to be a people who step into the gap for people who are in need, because we know one day we'll be in need. And we invite you to enter into this community. Um, so if you're a partner at Abacus, please, um, there's a donor advised fund. Um, Dave DeWolf was extremely generous, um, and so has Brent and Barrett. Um, so, you know, open it up. Just put our names in the thing if they write a check. Uh, but really, the links are at the bottom. It's very nice. Our gift to you is a tax deduction. Um, yeah, so let's raise some money. Okay, we're going to go eat tacos now. Thank you. <laughs>